Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about General Motors Electric Vehicle Investor Day, which occurred today, Wednesday, March 4th, 2020. And then we also have a couple quick Tesla notes as well to get to at the end. Starting with the GM event, GM spent about an hour and a half hosting media and investors as well as analysts today to go through their EV strategy for sort of the next five years. So let's go through exactly what GM announced and spend a bit of time analyzing that. The focus of today was on their next generation battery electric vehicle architecture. They are calling this architecture Altium. And I would say the focus was twofold on this. Number one, flexibility. And number two, that this is real. GM said multiple times that the vehicles are real, the powertrains are real. They really wanted to emphasize that to the point that it got a little bit weird, at least to me. We'll come back to that point a little bit later on, but on flexibility, GM says this Altium EV platform can accommodate battery packs ranging from 50 kilowatt hours to 200 kilowatt hours, which can provide up to 400 plus miles of range, zero to 60 second acceleration, as low as three seconds in some vehicles, and a charging rate up to 200 kilowatts, which GM says can provide a recharge of 100 miles in as few as 10 minutes. So to achieve this flexibility that they were emphasizing, they spent a lot of time talking about the module design and how they used that module to incorporate a variety of different cell setups within the module. Two specific points there they emphasized are that they can use pouch or prismatic cells depending on what they need at the time and depending on what is optimal in the supply chain at that point in time. And then they mentioned the module is designed in a way that allows for either horizontal or vertical stacking of those battery cells. So GM said if they use a vertical stack, that optimizes for energy density, but does add height, increasing the floor. So you need a higher roof vehicle. So for some of their lower roof vehicles, if they want more floor space, they can use a horizontal stack, which is apparently less optimal for energy density, but allows them to have a lower floor, creating more space in the cabin for those lower roof vehicles. So overall, a lot of focus on that architecture and the flexibility of it, allowing them to utilize the same architecture across their lineup of electric vehicles, which they also shared a little bit more detail on their roadmap there. Unfortunately for anybody not in attendance in person, GM didn't actually show a lot of these vehicles or images as they are waiting for the full unveils of the individual vehicles. So they didn't show these things on the live stream and no photos were allowed from people that were present, but we do have reports from different media outlets discussing what vehicles were there. As best I can piece together, there were 12 to 13 different vehicles comprised of two different bolts. So a small redesign of the current Chevy Bolt and then a, I guess, slightly larger utility vehicle crossover bolt. But it doesn't sound like any sort of major progress in terms of the powertrains on either of those vehicles. And then in terms of more of their future vehicles, they had the Hummer as well as a Hummer truck, a Chevy crossover, a new Cadillac SUV called the Lyric, as well as plans for a Cadillac sedan called the, I believe, Solistic, Solistic, not 100% sure on that one, uh, two new Buick SUVs, and then the Cruise Origin, which we saw unveiled about a month ago. So those were the quote-unquote heavily emphasized real vehicles that they had on hand, and then they reportedly also showed images of a second Cadillac all-electric SUV in addition to the Lyric, as well as an all-electric Chevy truck. Perhaps the most important element of these vehicles was pricing, and that was missing. This was asked in the follow-up Q&A, framed as a question about how these fit into the GM lineup in terms of if they'll be premium vehicles or if they'll be more cost competitive. And the essence of GM's answer was pretty much both. They said for cases like the Hummer and for Cadillac, those will be premium offerings and they allow GM the opportunity to sort of reset those brands. Obviously there's no current Hummer right now and Cadillac itself has been sort of going through a period of time of transition anyway. So to me, it sounded like those EVs in those brands would be highly premium but they did also say that affordability is one of the main problems for EVs, obviously, and that they have to solve that problem and that they're doing everything they can to solve it. They did actually share a little bit of information on their cell costs, showing a graphic that showed their current cost today at $145 per kilowatt hour at the cell level, and then their projected cost on this new platform over time falling below $100 per kilowatt hour. And they also emphasized that they believe this battery cost declining curve that we're on continues for a long time into the future. Interestingly, on those costs, one of the GM executives in response to a question in the Q&A session sort of offhandedly said that the cell cost is about 80 to 90% of the battery cost. So for comparison's sake, it's always a little bit difficult to figure out if people are talking cell costs or pack costs. In this case, it looks like GM is currently at about $145 per kilowatt hour at the cell level. And if we assume that's about 85%, taking the midpoint there, then they're at about $170 per kilowatt hour at the pack level. 
Compared to Tesla's cost, I think this was last addressed at the 2018 shareholder meeting when a actual listener and patron of the podcast, thank you, Joel, Joel Sapp asked a question about battery costs. And Elon said at the cell level, he thinks they could do better than $100 per kilowatt hour, quote, maybe later this year, end quote, again, back in 2018, and that they could get longer term below $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level, which he said, quote, but long term, meaning definitely less than two years, end quote, which would be right about now. So working with sort of loose information here, but that if that were the case, if Tesla was at $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level and GM is at 170, that would give Tesla about a 40% cost advantage over GM. GM did say they expect to get below that $100 per kilowatt hour at the cell level early in the product life cycle, whatever their definition of early means. So those are kind of the big things discussed. I think the biggest questions are pricing and then production, which they did touch on a little bit, saying that they're spending $20 billion from 2020 through 2025 not until 2025, so that's a six-year span, or about $3.3 billion per year on average. But that $20 billion isn't just capital expenditures, that is inclusive of their costs for talent and engineering and things like that. And they didn't discuss the breakdown of those costs, and they also were unwilling to, when asked specifically what sort of production output that sort of funding would provide, they wouldn't give any specifics on volume or return on investment, instead just referring to their previously discussed plans on their joint venture with LG, for a battery factory, saying that that will have 30 gigawatt hours of capacity with the potential to expand from there, which GM's president said would be enough for their needs for early to mid decade. So going back to that Altium EV architecture, they said the pack ranges would be from 50 kilowatt hours to 200 kilowatt hours. Even at the low end, 30 gigawatt hours would only be 600,000 vehicles. So I think best case, absolute best case in terms of what GM would be forecasting, and I don't think they would get there, but best case, I think you'd be looking at 600,000, maybe 2023, 2024 time period, but that would essentially equate to GM hitting all their targets and all the vehicles being at the low end of this range. Now, they could always accelerate their targets and outperform that, but based on everything that we've seen so far from the legacy automakers, I think that would be the wrong forecast to make at this point in time. So just quick 20-second summary of all of that, basically a new BEV architecture called Altium, 50 kilowatt hours to 200 kilowatt hours, flexible modules, which will span their range of EVs, which they announced more than 10 of, to be launching over these next few years. And they've committed $20 billion to those projects, but not just from a CapEx perspective across the entire investment. One thing that I did find pretty interesting here is the focus that GM had on modules and comparing that against Tesla with Elon Musk recently saying that modules for them are essentially vestigial parts that don't really have a purpose anymore. And they're working on designing out of those to just go sell to pack. And here for GM, the overwhelming focus, I would say, was on the flexibility of these modules. I'm sure we'll get a ton more insight to all these things and the comparisons between GM and Tesla and their strategies when we hear from Tesla at Battery Powertrain Day. But even here, I think you can see an example of competition skating to where Tesla is today rather than to where they are in the future. And that comes back to Elon saying the most important thing is pace of innovation. Anyway, it's of course good that GM is pushing for more electric vehicles, but I remain unconvinced that they have really flipped over this new leaf like they were trying to present. I mean, this was a heavily scripted presentation and it felt that way. And while they did share a lot of details, I could care less about how many different electric vehicles you're coming out with. I just want you to tell me how many it's going to be at what point in time. At least get a target out there that you can be held accountable for. I also don't love this strategy that all these other automakers seem to have about building these diverse electric vehicle lineups. Why not just make one that's good, actually get the economies of scale on that one that is good instead of focusing on getting it through all this flexibility that they are always talking about. And then after you have some success, you can start to leverage that success across a broader portfolio. That is the way to do it. Tesla provided the roadmap for you. Just follow it as quickly as you can. So those are my thoughts overall on GM's electric vehicle day. Let's get to a couple quick Tesla notes here as well. First is a little teaser on the full self-driving feature set from Elon on Twitter today in response to a tweet from Everyday Astronaut saying that he was picking up his Model 3 with the full self-driving upgrade today. Elon said, quote, cool, we're tracking to release more full self-driving features later this month, end quote. So we have plenty of experience with timelines like that changing significantly, but still exciting nonetheless. Elon has been mentioning on Twitter the fundamental rewrite of autopilot. So I think this tweet is encouraging in those regards and the progress there. And then Elon also shared a little bit of an update on the European Union regulation situation regarding autopilot. Somebody had asked, and he said, quote, We're making progress. Improved rules are going through the EU standards committees, hopefully better in a few months, end quote. 
So it may take some time yet, but hopefully that will progress and improve some of the limitations here on autopilot. That will do it for today, though. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Thursday, March 5th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.